Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's session on how to effectively measure product success. As product managers, it is important for us to have metrics informed strategy for a product. However, precursor to that is to understand the product performance and what metrics are you measuring and how are you evaluating? Uh, in today's session, or I would say a presentation, uh, I'll help you avoid some pitfalls in defining those right metrics to measure product success. Before we dive into it, uh, a brief uh, introduction about me. Uh, I'm a product manager at Squarespace, part of the growth team, uh, responsible for the conversion world uh, where uh, I'm responsible to get users to start a trial. Uh, it's been almost close to a year uh, working at Squarespace. Uh, before Squarespace, I worked as a product manager at OnDeck. Uh, it was a small business lending company, and I got an opportunity to work on different products uh, and different um, related to different customer journey. And uh, before that, um, I have an engineering background and leveraged a business degree to transition to product management. So get, going back to what we're going to learn, um, so the, the first learning, uh, like throughout my career, uh, as we were defining the product success, what I learned was we need to look beyond vanity metrics uh, by adding context. And I know what was going, what would be going in your mind is like, what is exactly van vanity metrics? So uh, vanity metrics are, uh, are those metrics that look good um, on the, uh, like uh, that look good are impressive on the surface, but do not provide any understanding or context into what hap what's happening. It doesn't help you define what your future strategy should be. And uh, like some of the examples, like number of app downloads, um, it doesn't tell us anything. It just tells us that how many do app downloads have happened. Number of visitors on your website, again, it doesn't tell us anything. Uh, why why do we know uh, what are some other other thing or, around those things like it uh, it can often be misleading uh, and it will not help you improve your product success in any form of way now let's take let's look at an example of an instagram influencer as an influencer um, uh, you have 100k followers on surface, it will make you think that this influencer is really successful. It's like, oh my God, this influencer has 100K followers. But what if I said that it took five years for that influencer to get to this number or only 500 followers engaged with, an, with any posts? Will you still think that having 100K followers is a success? Maybe not, right? So sometimes you need to make vanity metrics actionable. Like these are, these are important metrics to give you a little bit of indication how your product is doing, where it is at. But to inform you around the strategy, there are some other aspects that you need to bring in. So some of those things are timeframes, like, okay, how much time did it take to get to that number? Uh, data traffic sources, is that traffic on mobile, desktop? Is it uh, uh, from US region, North America region? Is it from um, U, uh, US, uh, like East Pacific? Where, where is the traffic coming from? Uh, the other one is the rates, conversion rates. How are those numbers converting? Uh, you can also look at those numbers on a per user basis, per visit rates basis. And lastly, you can do a ratio between those metrics. And I think once you do that, that's when it starts telling you some story. But you might be wondering, but why do some companies um, still use it? And vanity metrics can be helpful. Um, I can imagine, uh, imagine a product which you're just launching for the first time. It's an early stage. As a product manager, when you're doing and when you're launching a feature, how would you know what's a success? You have to have a, some benchmark. And I think that's when the vanity metrics is a good uh, way to go about it, okay? Uh, you want to set a milestone on a success metric. It's like reaching 100K website visitors is your goal or getting to your first 100 customers is your goal. And I think that that's when those metrics are useful, but, still making them actionable metrics can go 
longer way. Now, coming to our second learning, percentages can be misleading. Always have a secondary metric to give a full picture. Uh, this is a, I, I know, percentages, yes, this is a very obvious learning. I'm like, yeah, we know it. But sometimes a higher percentage, um, sometimes it's helpful to like remind ourselves that what's happening. Many times we get so busy in our work that just percentages are more than enough. So it's more for us to remind that how percentages can be misleading. So sometimes a higher percentage mislead us to show a higher improvement or a lower percentage can mislead us to show a lower improvement. Uh, and so adding another color or another uh, metric as a supporting metric can give us the real picture. Uh, using confusing our misleading numbers like percentage changes puts you at risk of over or underestimating your pro impact. Let's look at another, let's look at a website example. So as a product manager, you want to increase on your traffic. You ran an ad marketing campaign and you got the report. What does the report say? The report said traffic increased by 200%. This is exciting, right? This is a very impressive improvement. But what it doesn't say is whether it was an increase from five to 10 traffic or from 10,000 to 20,000 um, traffic. In this case, metric, secondary metric could be an absolute number of landings. Now, if I say the absolute number of landings is 50K, would your, uh, what would your answer would be? Like, yes, it would be that you improved the landing by 200% from, 50, uh, from 50K from fifty k to another number, which is, which is impressive. So this gives you a little bit of a view into, yes, this is a very good improvement. Let's talk about another example um, of using a, uh, percentage as a relative percentage change. If you launched two features to see whether it solved a given problem, feature A was for a desktop, it had a relative improvement of 20%. Feature B was for mobile and had a relative improvement of 10%. As a product manager, if you just looked at these numbers, you would make, you would make a decision to roll out feature A but that would be wrong because what you didn't see is these numbers. That the 20% improvement, was that an increase of conversion rate from 0.05%? And the 10% improvement, was that an increase of a conversion rate from 1%? So an absolute percentage change is just 0.1%, but the percentage change is different. Looking at these numbers, both improvements are same. And what would you do as a product manager on this? Yes, you would make a decision. And at that point of time, you need to bring in your product sense hat and decide that which one would you prioritize? Maybe you launch both of those features. Maybe you launch one of them and you launch the second feature later. But until unless you looked one level deeper, you wouldn't know that both of those features had a similar impact. Hence, percentages are important to show emphasis, but can, can give incomplete picture. Lastly, what is our th last learning? Time series are important to tease out the seasonality effect or trends. Throughout the product um, management career, uh, what I've seen is, Yes, you can look at absolute numbers, you can look at relative numbers, but until unless you have the time series, you wouldn't understand what's happening with your product. Is it, is it overall growing, declining? Um, so you need to take a step back and look at a complete time series. Sometimes you look at one year back, sometimes you look at two months back, or sometimes you look four or five years back. Now, let's talk through an example. Um, Imagine you're a business who sell um, plants. As a product manager, you are responsible for a product to drive plant sales. 
your manager reaches out to you and asks, why are we seeing a sudden increase in this in sale? And you go back and you remember that you launched a new feature just a week back. If you, uh, if you look at this, yeah, like you would go back to your manager and say that, yep, uh, we launched a feature. That's why I'm seeing a such big uh, jump. And you can see it's a very, very uh, steep improvement. But what if you look back the full year? Would your answer change? Yes. When you look back full 12 months, the, the improvement that you saw is diminished a little bit. There was a seasonality effect into play. This is a month when plant sales are usually high. Therefore, to get a full understanding of an impact of your new feature, you have to look at full time series. And then you have to look at year, year, year over year increase to understand the real improvement driven by the features release. So if you look at this, it's not saying that the feature release didn't um, see an improvement in the sales. But what it's saying is that you might have accounted for maybe 115% improvement in sales, but that's, that's not the real impact. When you look at the year over year, it would be just a 10% increase or a 15% increase. So it's important for as a PM for you to take a step back and look that is there a time, is this a time period when you see uh, uh, some kind of seasonality impact? Therefore, final wrap that I would have for you all. Metrics are core to PM's job, and it's important to bring context and time to tell a full story. Thank you.